I'm Melody Hanlowich in the studio today with Mark Hardy, an acting and musical theater professor here at Montclair State University. As a director, he has won multiple awards. As an actor and singer, he worked professionally in New York City for 18 years. Now he prepares for the opening night of his latest show, The Three Penny Opera. This interview is the second in a series of spotlight interviews within the theater and dance department and is our first faculty spotlight. Here to talk with us today, I'd like to introduce Mark Hardy. Thank you for being here, Mark. Hi, Melody. Great here to be with you. Thank you so much. So tell us about your background. When did you first take an interest in theater? Well, I think I was always interested. Um, I grew up in a small town in North Carolina, and there really was no live theater except for like little children's theater things that came through. But in high school, I really got interested and started actively participating. And I really think my love of music and literature kind of fueled that interest and drive so that I was prepped for it when it became available to Mm me. Awesome. So tell us about your college experience. Was this when you decided? Well, you just said high school was when you decided to pursue Right. It it really, um, I was lucky enough to grow up in a state that had a really wonderful governor's school program. So the summer between my junior and senior years of high school, um, I got to go to the North Carolina Governor's School in Drama. And that was the turning point for me when I realized, gee, people actually do this for a living and this isn't unrealistic perhaps as a goal and I was highly encouraged. And so then I went on to university in an acting program and moved to New York two weeks after graduating from college and uh, really haven't looked back. Awesome. So you really, you got like a kickstart. You started working right after college and I mean where did you start out exactly and well I started certainly at the at the bottom <laughs> rung of the ladder doing summer stock uh, non-union summer stock and sort of moved up slowly in the first few years and then got a national tour I got a, a role in the national tour of Les Miserables and that was sort of the first big job and then other big jobs followed so um, I did it the hard way Mm -hmm. bit by bit, but built a career and had a great life as an actor in New York. And then in my late 30s, got the opportunity to start teaching on the side a little bit and fell head over heels in love with teaching. So I made a big career transition. Yeah, I was going to, I was just about to ask you, when did you decide to make the transition? Because they're two completely different things. They are. I, I had always thought about it in the distant future sometime maybe I might enjoy teaching because I come from a a family of teachers. But really never seriously considered it until I got to do it a little bit Mm -hmm. um, and realized I I fell in love with it, as I said, but also that I was very good at it and that students responded to me. And I found it fulfilling in a way that acting wasn't. Um, And so I dabbled for a while and then um, had an opportunity to try teaching full-time for a semester. And pretty much a few weeks into that semester, I realized this is the the new path for me. Mm -hmm. So what made you decide to come to Montclair? I know you taught at Kentucky. Northern Kentucky University, also a small program, wonderful little program at Stevens College in Missouri. Uh, I also taught when I was in grad school at uh, Virginia Commonwealth in Richmond. But I had had my eye on Montclair for a while. It was on my radar. I was sort of keeping up with what was happening here, keeping up with job listings. And when this job was advertised, I jumped on it and applied right away. So I I wanted to get back east anyway, but the proximity to New York, the reputation of the, the university and the department had really drawn my eye. And the development of the musical theater program was of particular interest. Yeah, and we're so close to New York. I'm sure that has something to do with it. Yeah, um, it is. That's great. So tonight is the opening of the Three Penny yes, Opera, indeed. which you have directed. So talk a little bit about how you've gone about directing this show and your anticipations for tonight. Sure. Well, I've always loved this piece. It's a, it's a famously difficult, challenging, unusual piece. I've always been drawn to it. But I've never worked on it. So when we had a change in the season plan last year, I put this idea forward and the faculty committee was very supportive. We thought it would be great for students to work on this material. (coughs) Excuse me. So we began planning it and I started really digging in as a director. And the more I worked on it, the more I was convinced that the universality of the piece, the story, the themes um, drew me um, as a guiding 
focus of this production. So I decided to set the production modern day. Mm -hmm. And even though we keep it set in London as the script dictates, we've designed it both through costumes, lighting, scenery, all of the above really, as well as my own direction, so that you could imagine it taking place in any urban center anywhere in the world. Mm -hmm. There certainly are some London specifics involved, but we're not dealing with accents or dialects. Um, we're really trying to exploit the universality of the piece. And I also was conscious of my audience and wanting to get young people interested in the music of both Bertolt Brecht and Kurt Weill because many young people have no exposure to their work, except maybe the song Mac the Knife. Maybe they've heard Michael <laughs> Buble's version, right. but that's about it. That's right. I had no idea that was them. And I am familiar with Michael Buble is not the first to do that. But, right, of course um, not. So is there anything special about this show in particular that you have or hope to walk away with? Well, I would love for the audience to walk away really thinking about what they've seen and experienced. It was very important to Brecht and to Kurt Weill to shake people up, to, to alter them from the performance, through the performance. And so I think it's what any director hopes is that whatever somebody's reaction, that they have a strong reaction, that they don't simply leave saying, oh, I saw a show and it was nice. Mm -hmm. and I had a good time. You know? <laughs> um, I think we all hope for a little more. And I think certainly for thinking people, feeling people, this show is going to pose some troubling questions that are, if anything, more urgent today than they were in 1928 Berlin. Yeah. So I know it's about poverty and bourgeoisie and stuff it's, like that. It's about human struggle. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> it's about yearning and loss and the blocks that society creates for people without money. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that um, they did brilliantly in writing the piece is also explore the way in which people who are forced into poverty and crime actually further um, the, the dire situations they find themselves by participating, by not. You know, I, I'm, I'm thinking of a couple of years ago when there was a big, um, a big thought of sit-downs for illegal workers, illegal aliens in this country. What if they all stopped for one day? Mm -hmm. That's an idea that Brecht would have embraced. Yeah. And um, the show deals with the fact that people don't, in fact, stand up and say no. And, in fact, instead, they participate in exploitation mm -hmm. at every level. So uh, the, um, the, the poor and criminal elements in this play are not innocent victims. They participate. Sometimes without knowing it, maybe? Sometimes. Sometimes, Sometimes without knowing they have an option. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sounds very interesting. So... Last question, how do you compare performing to teaching and is there anything that your students have taught you? Wow, <clears throat> well performing and teaching are entirely different in many ways. In fact, when I started directing and teaching, I felt like I could use the half of my brain that got me in trouble as an actor because <laughs> I had a little reputation for asking a lot of questions <laughs> and not every director loves that. <clears throat> mm -hmm. um, so in that way, they can be very different, although I think you draw on very similar sources, whether you're acting, teaching, or directing, um, and I think similar inspirations. In terms of what my students uh, have taught me, far more than I have taught them, I am certain. Aww. And uh, it's one reason I love teaching, even on the rough days, is that I can never be complacent. I can never accept what worked last time because this is a new group of students. It's a new day. I can't even necessarily trust what happened in the last class because when you're teaching acting, it's a completely volatile, fluid process. Mm -hmm. And I have to be completely awake and completely engaged with the students. So um, that old adage is true that we learn more than they do, but also that they keep us young in in one way, which is to stay fully alive and fully awake. And I think my students as undergraduates are at that magic time in life when every day is completely alive and fresh. And so it reminds me to wake up and pay attention. 
That's so sweet. Oh, my God. Okay, so that wraps it up for this interview. We'd like to thank Mark once again for being the subject of our first faculty spotlight. Thank you, Mark. Well, it's been a pleasure, Melody. Thank Thank you. you. We encourage everyone to come out and see the Three Penny Opera, which opens tonight. The show runs from November 13th to the 16th at the Kasser Theater. Tickets are $15 at the Kasser box office, and undergrad students get one free ticket when they show their school ID. Thank you, everyone, for listening, and stay tuned for more Spotlight interviews.